It's homecoming on the Palouse as the Vandal faithful try to rally their team to its first victory on the season. Today they'll tee it up against a team also in search of its first win. It's the Idaho Vandals and the Temple Owls. It's coming up next. is an SWX sports presentation. The University of Idaho Vandals take on the Temple Owls. SWX college football starts right now. Welcome to Moscow, Idaho. We are on the campus of the University of Idaho as the Vandals take on the Temple Owls today here on SWX. Welcome to today's broadcast. Sam Adams alongside Bill Ames and Bill Temple and Idaho. Great both teams field. winless Bring coming into this contest. Both teams going to be very hungry this afternoon. Well, they are very hungry. And for the Idaho Vandals, Sam, it's about just being in football games. Temple's done a nice job of hanging in there, just haven't gotten over the hump. Idaho just wants to get a competitive game into the second half. And, and uh, Temple has clearly been competitive it's in its ball games. This despite breaking in a new starting quarterback who is a little dinged up in Connor Riley. Well, Connor Riley is dinged up. He comes in here. We'll be interested to see what we get out of him. Hasn't had a bad season, as we said. Has kept his team in games, but they've struggled in the red zone. Can they finish the job in the red zone, make some field goals perhaps, and put some points on the board? For those of you watching outside of the state of Idaho, the quarterback here for the Vandals is a household name. He's been a hometown hero in Coeur d'Alene, which is just up the road, winning two state championships there. He's a two-time state player of the year. And now the learning curve for that young man. Here's the redshirt freshman starting quarterback, Chad Chalich. Well, Chad Chalich has been exceptional, really, in his freshman season. 67% completions, no interceptions, and the team's leading rusher, Sam. So what more can you ask of this young man other than just to win games? And that's really the next step, leading his team to a victory. That's what they want here in Moscow, Idaho. And Idaho would just like to keep their quarterbacks upright at this point. They lead the nation right now in 25 sacks allowed, so they need to protect the quarterback today against a very aggressive Owl defense. When we come back, we'll have your kickoff. It's straight ahead live right here from the Kibbe Dome after this. Welcome back to the Kibbe Dome. We are live here in Moscow, Idaho for this matchup between the Temple Owls and the Idaho Vandals. Team captains meeting at midfield for today's coin flip. And the packed house here inside the Kibbe Dome. Glad to have you on board wherever you may be watching. And Temple, the long travelers, absolutely coming into this ball game, 2,595 miles all the way from Philadelphia, their longest trip in a regular season game since their 2005 season opener at Arizona State. So a long trip, to say the least, for the Owls, who are up way past their bedtime. Well, they sure are. Game time uh, here shouldn't be an issue. It would be 5 p.m out on the East Coast and certainly that's uh, that's a time that a lot of these players are accustomed to being on the football field so no real issue there but the, the travel 2,500 miles is, is huge and they look around they don't see the tall buildings that they're accustomed to in Philadelphia Pennsylvania the only tall building you're gonna see in these parts maybe a grain silo or the Kibbe Dome or the, Kibbe Dome. the tallest thing they see while they're out here and Idaho by the way has a punter that might scrape the ceiling here with their punts. There's Paul Petrino, first year head coach here at the University of Idaho, trying to rebrand this team, rebuild the pride. Well, they're 0-4 to start this season. They opened at North Texas, lost 40 to 6, at Wyoming 42 to 10 the following week. Then a home game against NIU, by far their most competitive contest on the year, a 45-35 loss. And then last week, a shutout loss at Washington State. 42 to nothing. Meanwhile, for Temple, they also have a first-year head coach in Matt Rule, who takes over for Al Golden, who, of course, is now at Miami. So Rule versus Petrino, Owls versus Vandals, and we're just about ready to go. Well, the one thing that Paul Petrino is trying to emphasize with this team is just get that winning mentality. They obviously winless this year, but they need to act like they can win ball games, and that's really been the major frustration here is that 
you know, they've gotten behind early, and then you really haven't seen the fight. Well, they need to see some fight out here today, and they, I'm sure they will love being here at home in the Kibbe Dome in front of this home crowd. Be two back to return for Temple in the Road Whites. 34 and 26. Thomas and Gilmore. Both teams in search of that elusive first victory. A combined 0-7 thus far, but something has got to give here this evening. And this kickoff is sponsored by Dishman, Dodge Ram, Chrysler, and Jeep here on homecoming weekend here in Moscow, Idaho. And we're underway, sailing into the end zone. That'll be a touchback, and the Owls won't get a return here. Temple led by their junior quarterback, Connor Riley. They wanted to save him last week in a game against Fordham, a game they ultimately lost at the Owls, 30-29, to so he had to come off the bench. They wanted to rest him that week. Didn't happen, so here comes Riley as he tries to guide this Temple squad to its first victory well and he's played well the statistics are fine 52 percent completions taking care of the football again it's much like chad chalice is just finding a way to get over the hump lead your team to victory first down 10 to go from the 25 yard line On the read option, handoff going up the middle, not going much of anywhere is Harper. He will gain five. There's a late flag coming in here on the play. I think you're going to get a personal foul or unsportsmanlike after the whistle was blown. A little too, too much extracurricular in the defensive backfield. So a personal foul against the offense, which you don't see much. And while they assess that, let's take a look at today's starting lineups. We introduced you to the starting quarterback for Riley. Kind of a new offensive line. We'll get to that in a moment. Harper, the H-back. And then you have Fitzpatrick, Christopher, and Alderman, the wide receivers. And all sorts of changes on the offensive line. Last week, they had four seniors on the offensive line. This week, just one. Yeah, we'll talk a lot about that throughout this game. On the handoff, and there's that suffocating Vandal defense that we haven't seen a whole lot of, but they're looking to turn the tide here this afternoon. Here is that Vandal defense. Led by Max Ford, the do-everything defensive end at number 40. You will hear his name early and often. Mark Mion, part of the linebacker unit. And then the secondary, Dixon getting the start. At the corner alongside Whitehead. Back to pass. Some time. Flushed down and brought down for the sack of the 10 yard line. Um, Keener in on the sack. Well, and that's one of those things that Idaho just hasn't done much of early in the season is get to the quarterback. Riley, you talked about sore shoulder, doesn't want to run, certainly doesn't want to take hits on that arm but can't avoid the big sack and a great start to this game defensively for the Idaho Vandals should end up in great field position. So a three and out on fourth down and 23. There's Keener out of Avondale, Arizona. Paul Layton back to punt from the goal line. Just got it away. Epps back to return, moving backwards, now moving forwards. Boy, oh boy, up to the 25-yard line, and that is where Chad Chalich and this Idaho Vandal offense will take over on their opening possession. Chalich, a redshirt freshman out of Coeur d'Alene High School, a two-time state champion with the Vikings. Uh, we talked about in the open, Sam. He's done a nice job throwing the football, but he's also been the team's leading rusher. You can't have that at the University of Idaho to have your quarterback be your leading rusher and to take that much punishment this kid needs to be in there all season long they're going to need something out of that running back spot and that's richard montgomery in the backfield had all sorts of ball carriers this year 
the freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, getting the start here in the backfield. Challenge out of the pocket, throwing, and incomplete. Take a look at the starting offense. The pass is incomplete to Legron, the tight end. Brown listed as the starting running back. Love it. Watson, who played high school ball with Chad Challenge at Coeur d'Alene and Epps, and you just saw Legron. And there's the offensive line anchored by Mike Marbo, the center. Yeah, Wenatchee Panther out of Wenatchee High School in the state of Washington. Send Montgomery in motion on second down. Challenge incomplete. Najee, love it. The intended man brings up third down and 10. Here's a look at the Owl defense. Nate Smith and Levi Brown, along with Kamal Johnson. And then Matekovich, watch out for him. And uh, Caponegro as well, part of the linebacker unit. And then Abdul Smith and Marshall are the safeties. Trying to ease Chalich in right now, Sam. Some nice, easy throws. He's just been off target. One low, another behind his receiver. He's got to make those throws. Third down, 10 to go. Yet to go to the ground. Challenge now going to the ground on the run. This is what he did so well in high school, and he'll move the chains. He took a heck of a shot, but he gains 11 as Idaho moves the chains. Well, and he can make things happen. You don't want to see that kind of shot, though, at the end of a play. That's going to wear a quarterback. He's a big, strong kid, but uh, that's tough for anybody. Great decision, though, to get up the field and run and pick up that first down. Chad Challenge is a heck of an athlete. Challenge on the run. Picks up the first down, entered the ball game with 88 yards rushing through four games. Completing 67% of his passes for 801 yards. Now you have to factor in the sacks and the backwards plays as well. Kind of misleading. He can run the football, folks. He's looking deep. He has a man wide open at the 40, and it's caught in stride. And look out, taking it the distance. No flags on the play. How about that? The home run call. And in for the touchdown, Richard Montgomery, the freshman from Jacksonville. Well, great job there. First of all, with the play action and the wheel route to Montgomery. Ball's right on the money. We talked about a Chad Challenge, a little off target with the first two throws. Not on that one. That thing was right on the money. And you could see the burst that Montgomery has getting down the field. Great start for Idaho. We'd have to take a look at the replay. Don't know if it was a wheel route, whatever it was, left wide open and unaccounted for. And here's Austin Rico on to attempt the point after. Splits the upright right into the All-State net. Seven to nothing Idaho as they have jump-started their offense here against the Owls. The push-ups are coming here in Moscow. Stay with us. You're watching Vandal Football. Today's college football broadcast is brought to you by Dishman. For Spokane's best selection of Jeep, visit the 10-acre Superstore at Dishman. Dishman, Dodge Ram, Chrysler, and Jeep. And visit the 10-acre Superstore at Dishman. Dishman, Dodge Ram, Chrysler, and Jeep. All right, welcome back here to the Kibbe Dome where it is seven to nothing on a 64 yard touchdown strike to Montgomery. Well, great. Couldn't ask for a better start if you're a Vandal fan coming out here. Fans are excited. Defense and offense putting it together early. And a return from five yards deep in the end zone. Jihad Thomas. And he can't clear the 20 yard line. We've seen those booming kicks in high school, and we're witnessing them firsthand now in college. So let's take a look at the replay here on that touchdown pass, and it was right in the breadbasket. Well, you see, you see Montgomery out there to the left of your screen. He just runs a wheel route right by the safety, and you're not going to catch this man. Great execution on the wheel route. Six points, Vandals. Montgomery kind of a hidden weapon receiving the football. That's his second receiving touchdown. He's used primarily as a ball carrier where he's rushed 21 times this year. First down, 10 to go from the 19 for the Owls who trail 7 to nothing. Riley, the pass out in the flat. It is caught near the first down marker. Fitzpatrick with his first reception. Jalen Fitzpatrick, the junior wide receiver. You talked about it already, Sam. This offensive line for Temple rebuilt coming into this game. Got a lot of issues there, some injuries, some other personnel problems. They come back to the same play. Getting good penetration immediately all over it. 
Jayshon Jordan, the tackle. And it's right near the first down marker. Should be enough to move the chains, and it will. Similar idea for Temple now, coming out with a short passing game, trying to get Idaho to come up and then perhaps take your shots downfield, although that's not part normally of this Temple offense. Four receivers set here on first down. From the 30. On the handoff, look out, here's Harper up to the 45 into the secondary. Finally brought down inside Idaho territory at the 49. Kenneth Harper, one of those guys, 225 pounders, kind of the bulldozer. They've got a really a, a tandem there, a running back who's been successful this year. Harper, you can see he likes to take on those tacklers. Big gain for Temple. 21 yards on the carry from Harper, averaging four and a half yards per carry on the season. Harper remains in the backfield after that 21-yard run. He'll take the handoff up the middle. This time, he's going nowhere. Tui Pelotu and company in on that tackle. Yeah, Tui Pelotu does a nice job. Again, filling gaps. Nice read early. Looking at his offensive lineman. Gets up the field quickly. And then finishes the job with the, with the nice tackle. Eric Tue Pelotu, a junior and a junior college transfer from Menlo Park, California. Second down, nine to go from the 48. Riley to throw. Underneath has a man. That's Christopher, the sophomore. And he's inside the 35, down at the 33 to move the chains once again. Well, you can see Riley's got some nice zip on that football. Christopher just runs a nice, easy slant route here. Puts it right on the money and a shoestring tackle or else that could have gone for a lot more. Christopher with his eighth catch on the season. No huddle. They go back to the option read. Pass out on the far side. It is complete for a gain of about five. Another reception made by Fitzpatrick. Pretty good rhythm right now for the Temple Owls. Riley getting the ball out quickly, not letting that pass rush get into him. And again, just taking the nice, easy throws. Second down, five to go. No huddle. Very young team out of Philadelphia. Riley on the far side once again. That'll be enough on the forward progress. Alderman, his first catch, the senior Ryan Alderman. Right 30, now, sorry, sorry, Bill, I was just going to mention about the youth on this team. 32 underclassmen on the death chart this year, tied for second most in the country. Yeah, first-year coach, he's trying to find out who wants to play for him. Some of the upperclassmen have found themselves outside of the depth chart because of that. These young guys coming out, playing hard for their first-year head coach. First down and 10 now from the Vandal 22. Idaho has not been able to make stops here through four games. We'll see if they can make a stand here. From the 22, Riley underneath once again. Pass caught by Alderman, who is quickly tackled, but not before he gets the first down. And you're seeing more press coverage now as you get closer to that end zone. And here's where Temple has had trouble. They've gotten to the ball down to this end of the field, only to come away with no points. They've had missed field goals, missed opportunities for touchdowns. Right here has been a trouble spot for the Temple Owls. And I beg your pardon, it may or may not be enough for that first down. It's so close, they'll bring out the chains for the first time. They'll need a measurement at the 12-yard line. Boy, a great atmosphere today here, Sam, in Moscow, Idaho. We've been out here a few times over the last couple of years. This is the best I can remember it being for an Idaho Vandal football game. Vandal pride indeed here on homecoming week to wrap up this homecoming weekend. As we rolled into town, saw all those tailgaters out there, saw the RVs, and... What a great place to watch a football game. It is enough for the first down as Temple continues to march downfield. First down, 10 to go from the Idaho 12-yard line. Harper, the man in the backfield, alongside Riley, the junior quarterback. Here comes that crowd noise as Riley tries to bark in the signal. 10 on the play clock. Riley will throw, looks at his first read, immediately incomplete. Yeah, rushed that throw just a little bit, trying to get it out to one of his tight ends, Wanemi Amusu. And just fired it in there a little bit. It's a little bit too much zip in it. The big man has trouble going down again, and you want to put that ball right on the numbers for him. Second down.
On the play, fake throws into the end zone. It hits the crossbar. Well, it's become exclusively a passing team now for Temple. Harper had success early running with the ball. They haven't gone back to that. Now you're in a situation of third and ten. You almost have to throw it. So third down and ten. The crowd letting him have it. Rush coming over the middle. It's caught. It's not going to be enough for the first down. Wells short of that first down. Just a short gain of maybe four on the play. Yeah, Juan Martinez does a great job of just with that short tackle. But Temple now, here's been the uh, adventure for the Owls this season. Have not yet made a field goal. 0 for 3 on the season. It's been, it's been kicker by committee, Sam. And the kicking unit, kind of a kicking by committee. And it's Nick Visco who will get the stab here. He has not attempted a field goal this year. He is two for two on PATs. This will be a 25-yard attempt, plenty of leg, and it clears the uprights. And the Vandals surrender their first points. The Owls are on the board. 7.39 to go here in the first. It's the Vandals seven and the Owls three. Vandal Pride running deep here in Moscow. And Bill, two teams just scrapping, clawing. They're going to do anything they can to get into that win column because you know what? Those opportunities get fewer and fewer as the season goes on. Well, they both look at this game as a winnable game. Temple has been in some tight games. They've been close. They just haven't been able to close the deal. And for Idaho, being here at home makes a world of difference. You can tell they're feeding off of this crowd. Montgomery and Epps back to return. Montgomery had that touchdown catch. This is Epps from the four. Boy, he's lucky that ball didn't come loose. He got blindsided on that special teams tackle. Marked down at the 13, and that is where the Vandals will take over. Well, let's see if Idaho can come up with a little bit of an encore here from that first series. Again, much like we've seen the, the entire season, it was really Chad Chouch first converting a third down with his legs and a three run, and then the strike to Montgomery for the touchdown of 64 yards. Idaho playing as an independent team this season. Temple playing out of the American Athletic Conference. Challenge from the shotgun. The handoff going to Epps. Epps, he's got some speed. These running backs bring a little bit of everything. A nine-yard pickup on that carry. Just a quick hitter. And now with that long touchdown pass and the wheel route from the running back, Temple has to be aware of those backs coming out of the backfield, playing on their heels just a little bit. Great play call for, on first down for a nine-yard gain. And they will now go to the no huddle on second down and one to go. The running back now Olubode. They continue to rotate those running backs in and out. Olubode on the pitch. He'll shoulder the load and take it up to the 25. He needed one. He got three and he picks up the first down. Well, that's not typically a play you're going to run on first or second down. Because all you really need is one or two yards. That's what you expect to get out of a play like that. It's exactly what Idaho does. Just making first downs, plotting your way through the field. This is a team that has dominated most of their opponents in time of possession. Olu Bode, kind of the thunder, and here comes the lightning once again in the form of Montgomery, the true freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. First down and 10. Defense jumped momentarily, got back. Seven on the play clock. Chalich now under center. The handoff goes to Montgomery. Left tackle up to the 30. Five-yard pickup. And this is what Coach Petrino wants to see from this offense. Well, we were here in the spring to, to cover this spring game. And the one thing we both walked away from, Sam, was this is an explosive offense with Chalich and these running backs. you got some good receivers and tight ends. They can move the football, and they've shown it once again here this afternoon early. This is his power formation as you're going to see from this team Montgomery 
Out in the flat, excuse me, though, that's one. That's Desmond Epps with the reception. Third down conversion's been a problem now for Idaho early in the season, only converting on 27%. Had a big one on that first drive with Challenge. Another one here, third and one, trying to keep this drive going. Third down and one to go from their own 34. Still 15 on the play clock as Challenge gets the play in. Challenge with time, one on one coverage, has a step, tight coverage, incomplete. Epps, the intended man, no flags on the play. And perhaps you, you, you run that play on third and one, knowing that you're going to go for it on fourth down, although here comes the punt team. So surprising that they would take a shot third and one rather than just pick up the first down. So the Temple defense now holds for the first time. And here comes the punting unit. Austin Rico punters don't get much better than this folks sixth in the nation in punting average 46.9 yards per punt the long of 63 there's a line drive punt good hop one hop at the 15 yard line and out of bounds is the return man Alderman Temple offense coming back on the field 7-3 ball game midway through the first quarter. All right, B.A., let's take a look at our game plan. Well, the keys I'll tell you, the game for these uh, teams. Well, red zone defense is going to be a key for, for Temple. They've been strong all year long. Uh, they've got to maintain that, especially here on the road. And, and then somebody make a kick. We've seen one already, so they've got their first one of the season, but it really has been running or a kicker by committee. We'll get to Idaho sometime during this series of Temple. Yeah, if they allow this no huddle offense working very fast. Connor Riley, empty backfield for the quarterback. Temple will start this drive from its own 15 yard line. Quick throw, your side. Take a look at the game plan. We got to get it in real quick, though, Bill. Well, make the most of your time. And, you know, time of possession has been a big advantage for Idaho, but only 12 points per game scoring. They've got to make most of their time. And then third down defense, getting off the field on third down. To this point, they've had trouble with that against Temple. They did force the field goal attempt, but uh, third down defense going to be a key for the Vandals here today. Second down after the no gain to Christopher on the reception. Student section getting louder and louder here. One on the play clock. They're not going to get it off. Delay of game call. I don't know if they got the timeout. There is a flag on the field, and Coach Rule wanted a timeout. Well, he was trying to get the timeout. Somehow, the official either didn't hear him or wasn't looking his way, may have just come too late. He certainly doesn't look happy about it, that's for sure. And while it's loud here, I can't imagine it's any louder than what they faced in North Bend, Indiana against the Fighting Irish a few weeks ago. So that's just something that's inexcusable for your offense. Or even South Bend, for that matter. Did I say North Bend? Yeah, that's I'm all right. I'm sorry. It's a Northwest I'm thing. A, I'm a big Notre Dame fan. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Second down and 15, Riley pumps. And it's going to be five more yards going backwards for the Owls. A false start. Well, those are the telltale signs of a team that's a little flustered playing in a road environment. And whether you're in the Kibbe Dome or you're at Century League Field in Seattle, you get a false start penalty or a delay a game. The fans know that that one's on them, and they'll just pick it up a little bit more. That was Zach Hooks, the sophomore. Second down and 20 now to go. They don't have much more farther back to go here, Bill. They're running out of room. Well, unless you can pin your ears back now, if you're Idaho, everything's been fairly quick in the passing game for Temple as the referees needed to discuss something. It's always the game clock, isn't it? We're going to lose five seconds. Better go put that time back. Go ahead and say it. that might loom large as we get to the end of the half. <laughs> In which case, good they put it back on. Uh, crowd getting louder here. 
Riley in the end zone, looking for room. They got a hand on him, throws it up and out of bounds. Boys, he lucky he got rid of that one. Max Ford brought him down in the end zone. Well, I'll tell you, rolling your quarterback out into space in their own end zone, a couple things they have a problem with. First of all, running back, trying to block Max Ford, that's a no-win situation. And keep in mind, if you get a holding penalty in the end zone, that's a safety, so pretty risky play. I'm not sure I wouldn't just try to run the ball, do something simple here if I'm Temple to get some room for your punter. Third down and 20 from the five. Riley with time, steps up, steps up overthrown. He had a couple steps on the receiver. Well, I'll tell you, Jalen Fitzpatrick slowed down on his route, had his man beat, and if he keeps running, that thing's a score. He slowed down enough, and the coaches are telling him exactly that right now. Kid clearly has an arm. He gunned that thing. And as you said, Fitzpatrick just not able to close in on the football. And here's Leighton on to a punt deep yeah, in the end zone. Yeah, he had a great punt the last time he was in this situation. Really backed Idaho up. High punt towards midfield. Here's Epps from the 40 in Idaho territory. Side steps one. And they'll give him forward progress up near the 46-yard line. These coverage teams for Temple have done a nice job early in this game. A couple of punts now. They really haven't let Epps break away. Leighton averaging 44 yards per punt. So here comes Challenge trying to direct a second touchdown drive, starting with great field position from the Vandal 46. Temple 0-3 on the year, opening with a loss at Notre Dame, 28-6. They hung with the Irish in that game. Houston losing that one, 22-13, and then Fordham a stunner last week, 30-29. Challenge on the keeper. Defense nearly bit up to midfield. It's a gain of four. Boy, really they, sold that. They did by, and Challenge got out of the gates a little bit slowly because he sold the play fake so well. He got out of there a little bit slow. If he could have gotten a, a little bit better head of steam or maybe even pitch it at that point, you're going to have a pretty good play on your and hands. I think that's where that hesitation was. He was thinking about that second option on the pitch. Gain of four for Challenge, who continues to run the ball very well this afternoon. 3.40 to play here in this first quarter from the 50. A little bunched up on the play. Montgomery does take the handoff, three yards shy of the first down. Well, it's really all season long, it's been Baker, Brown, and Montgomery. We have yet to see Baker. Word on the street was that he did not suit up for one of the practices. We have yet to see him on the football field. Yeah, and and Baker been, has been the leading rusher on this team. I'm sorry, Sam. I haven't seen him on the sideline. I've been looking for big number seven somewhere on the sideline. Haven't seen him. Challenge to throw. Passes. Tip. Challenge catches it. Bobbles it. It's on the turf. I guess the question is, did Challenge have possession when he caught his own pass? Actually, I think, Sam, the bigger question is going to be, is it a backwards pass? I don't know that Chalich ever had possession of the ball, but if that ball went backwards, that's going to be a fumble. Incomplete forward pass is the call. I'm sure the replay is going to tell the story. Well, it's a huge break for Idaho. Take another look at it. He's throwing that ball behind the that's, line of that's scrimmage. Pretty that's pretty much lateral. That's a lateral. And I don't know if, uh, if they'll get a chance to take a look at this. Now, Well, the punting team very quick to get on the field. I think I, I think they're they're wondering if they shouldn't challenge this one, and I, I think it's a good idea. Ryan Alderman is the return man. Rico just gets the punt away. This one is high to the 15-yard line. Great punt by Rico, and that one nearly scraped the ceiling here at the Gibby Dome. Challenge, uh, one of just two players in the nation right now at the FBS level to both punt and kick. Rico, first here at Idaho. Excuse me, yeah. what I say? Challenge. Challenge. He's doing well, everything. He does everything on the football field. Yeah. He could punt, I bet, if he wanted to. Yeah, Austin Rico, first here at Idaho to do that since Mike Barrow back in 2005. And he's right on his average right now, Sam, averaging eight punts per game 
That's near the top in the NC2A. Riley, quick throw, short pass. And Karpinski with his first reception. Tyler Karpinski, freshman wide receiver. I'll tell you, they're, they're making some out of this short passing game, and then they're going to come back to some of those deep throws because you see Riley can throw it despite a short soldier shoulder. He can get it out there. Second down, two to go. Williams is the running back now. Zaire Williams, freshman. The handoff is to Williams, who will clear the first down up to the 30. Gain of six. Yeah, nice compliment to Harper. Harper more of the bruising running back. Here with Williams, a little bit shiftier. Hard to control, hard to see in that backfield. Not a terribly big kid. First down, 10 to go from the 30. On the handoff up the middle, and Williams will pick up eight yards all the way up to the 38-yard line. Player down on the field. One of the offensive linemen, that's Sean Boyle. Boyle had actually moved over. A lot of movement going on, and we had a chance off camera to talk about that. And kind of a patchwork offensive line right now for Temple. We have the right tackle for, for Temple, and they've had a lot of moving pieces come in. Uh, this season at the offensive line position. A big shakeup, uh, though, this week. Yeah, it looked like his hand just got stuck maybe in the in the shoulder pad area or in the jersey of Quayshawn Buckley. Well, let's take a look at Temple in the conference the AAC its first year here and boy you talk about some heavyweights out there Louisville looms large next week number seven team in the country among others you know, and they played Houston tough Houston came in having scored 65 points in the week prior to their their game with Temple Temple able to able to keep them well below that only giving up 22 after the injury timeout, second down and two. Williams remains in the backfield. He'll take the handoff. Ford and others in on the tackle. Some extracurriculars going on as well. Boy, for two teams that have never played, it's getting a little chippy out there. Well, when you haven't won a football game, all of a sudden it turns into a rivalry, doesn't it? You'll take anything at this point. So they'll get the third down now and one. Third down and one. And here comes the crowd once again. Eye formation here. And Harper is dotting the eye. And they'll take a timeout. Charge timeout to Temple. Well, that'll prove that the Owls can take a timeout because they tried to call one on that delay of game. Never got the call, but they do here. And with that injury to Boyle, everything gets shaken up on that offensive line unit. They start having to move people around. You've got Pete White, uh, actually a guy who transferred in from Maryland, started the season, looked like he was going to be the anchor of this offensive line at 6'4", 330 pounds, number 63. And uh, he fell out of favor with the coaching staff. Now with the injury to Boyle, he comes in, and they have to move some pieces around. White now at the, right, at the left guard position. So difficult on an offensive line when you're having to move around like that. Well, we talk about the... Youth on Temple, 32 underclassmen. How about for Idaho? Among all FBS teams, this team is the fourth least experienced in the country. Coming from last season, just eight returning starters for a combined 166 starts. Bottom line, two young, hungry teams. After the timeout, back to the I formation here for Temple. Third down and one. The give to Harper. Harper brought down immediately in the backfield. Ford on the tackle. That's Max Ford with two X's. Well, you got to wonder about that decision on third and one. 
you go into the I formation, traditional, no receivers. You just say, We're, our guys are going to beat your guys. But you forget Max Ford's a heck of a football player who comes off the edge. Nobody blocks him. You would think that that's a guy you'd want to get a helmet on if you're going to try to play smash mouth football on third and one. Layman, or Layton, excuse me, on to punt once again. This time, of course, with much better field position. From the 23, Epps is the return man. Fair caught at the 18. 22 seconds remaining here in this first quarter that has been tightly contested. The big difference, that 64-yard touchdown pass from Chad Chalich to Montgomery. You know, not a lot of points, Sam, but a lot of action and some good football. You see some great defense on both sides of the ball, some big plays, uh, and a lot of things, and we've only gotten through 15 minutes. This drive will start from the Idaho 18-yard line. Challenge will operate from the shotgun. And off. Not going much of anywhere. Maybe a yard. Not more than that. The running back is Jarrell Brown, junior out of San Mateo. And that'll do it for quarter number one. Idaho leads this one against Temple. Seven to three here on homecoming weekend. When we come back, we'll have your second quarter between the Vandals and the Owls. Welcome back here to the Kibbe Dome. It is seven to three, Idaho leading against Temple. Both teams in search of that first win on the season. Just about ready to go now to start this second quarter of action. Idaho from its own 19-yard line on second down. Chad Challenge, the redshirt freshman quarterback under center. The running back, Jarrell Brown. Give to Brown, right side has a hole. Up to the 25. Well, physical ball game, Bill, in this uh, era of the spread offenses. It's nice to see a little smash-mouth football out there. Well, I know both, you love it. Absolutely. Both of these coaches, uh, well, I love it because I don't think I could have played in either one of these <laughs> systems. But both of these coaches really uh, wide open in terms of their offensive philosophy. They like to spread it out, as you've seen. And then when they need to, uh, they'll just try to come and run right over you, although it did not work well for Temple on that third and one, the previous possession. It'll be a third down and three. Montgomery back in the tailback position here in a pistol formation. Quick throw out to Montgomery. He already had that touchdown. He's brought down, and he is brought down for a loss. So, well, well really created by Nate Smith, number 35. Got into Chalich's face. Chad had to throw it sooner than he would have liked, and that didn't allow his blockers to get out front. Safeties came up, and corners made a nice tackle, but credit Nate Smith really disrupting that play from the outset and Tavon Young on the tackle for loss his 19th tackle on the season here is Austin Rico local kid played high school ball at Central Valley High School had a 67 yard field goal last year as a senior punt out to the 38 and it's brought up to the 41 yard line so the Owls now take over on offense with good field position Riley on the season is passed for 497 yards, just one touchdown against two interceptions. He's been a little dinged up, but he's played through the pain. Well, his arm looks strong today. I mean, we've seen him throw the deep ball. He's had some nice zip on the underneath throws. They just haven't been able to, to you know, put it in the end zone yet. And again, that's been the problem for Temple. They move the football up to a certain point, and then they come away with very little. Riley in the first half, 8 of 13 throwing the football. They go back to the ground game and going backwards. Well, I tell you what, 
if Temple can't figure out this run game against this stingy Idaho defense, they're going to have to go exclusively pass. Well, it seemed like early on that they were having the success, but because they were running more at Idaho, now they're trying to stretch things out. Idaho just reacting very quickly. I think you're right, though, Sam. Maybe that quick passing game need to get back to that. A loss of one. Zaire Williams, the blocking back, a throw downfield, overthrown and incomplete. Coverage by Jay Sean Jordan. Yeah, great coverage there by Jordan. Really running stride for stride. Forcing Riley to overthrow that ball. This is right in Idaho's wheelhouse right now in these third down situations. Really getting the crowd involved here inside the Kibbe Dome. It's a band box here. It gets loud. They love three and outs in Moscow. Third down and 11. Idaho showing blitz. They'll send five. Here comes the rush. Riley gets rid of it. The throw and a quick tackle. Two yards shy of the first down. A very aggressive defense. And on the tackle, Solomon Dixon, the sophomore cornerback from Honolulu. Boy, great catch here by Nate Hairston. The red shirt freshman goes up and snatches that ball. But as you said, right on coverage. And they are going to force that three and out. It's a fourth down and two with a punting team on the field. Idaho preparing for a fake here. They're, they're not really setting up any kind of a, a block. They're just going to hold their men up, knowing that Temple's trying to just get that ball down sometime somewhere inside the 20. Paul Layton gets the punt off. A high, booming kick at the one. Boy, oh boy, punts do not get better than that, Bill Ames. It towed the line, but it is a touchback. Holy smokes. Don't see that very often, but it is a touchback. Folks, we're coming back with more. It's 12.02 to go here in the second. 7-3 Idaho. Folks, you be the judge. Did it go in the end zone? Take a look at that freeze frame right there. Saw those rubber granules kind of pop up in the air. Look. Looked like it was at the one inch line to me. Well, one thing I know, that official that was the left of your screen, he had, had a, a good little view. better angle than we did <laughs> up here. So we're going to have to trust him. Great punt, though. Idaho will take it because they get the touchback. Instead of starting at the one, it'll start from the 20, leading 7-3 to three against Temple. Challenge to throw, steps up, throws over the middle. It's caught. Najee, love it. Love it near the 30-yard line. A yard shy, a pickup of nine on the Lovett reception. And that's a and that's a pass that they tried to complete early in the game. Challenge threw it behind Lovett. This time right on the money and in stride. And for a guy like Najee Lovett who can flat out run, the senior, you've got to get it to him on the run so he can keep going. Lovett, a senior out of Berkeley, California in the Bay Area. Second down, one to go. Challenge will keep it. Continues to sell it so well. You think you're watching the University of Oregon offense out there. Well, and again, not terribly tall, six feet, but 205 pounds. So there's some strength there, and he likes to take on those tacklers, especially once he gets into that safety cornerback area. He can handle himself running the football. It's getting hit by the linebackers that scares me. First down and 10 from their own 37. And here's Chalich on the run. He's got all sorts of room. Boy, and Bill, you weren't kidding around, man. He's willing to take those hits as he goes out of bounds and still takes on a couple tacklers. Well, I can't imagine that Paul Petrino's terribly excited about this decision of taking on the tackle. I mean, you do show your toughness, and the team will rally behind you. There's two options on that run. One is slide, the other is go out of bounds. Yeah, and I, I'd choose either one of those over what happened there, but you can't question this kid's toughness. Great play, and try to get that wheel route. Wasn't there, but what was there was the wide open lane to run. Here comes the pass rush on the blitz, and coming in with a full head of steam was Stefan Marshall, the redshirt freshman. Child, it's kind of got his head twisted around there. Thought maybe there was a face mask involved. Well, that's one way to bring him down. Now, good pressure up here again with the blitz. And, boy, that looked like a clear face mask. Official was standing right there. So the blitz by Marshall and the takedown by Sharif Finch. We're going to take the timeout. 10-29 to play here in the second. 
Hey, hey, hey. Who's that, Bill? Bill Cosby, Temple football circa 1961, famous alumni. I don't know quite what to say after that, uh, that little I I imitation. That oh. was great. Second down, 12 to go for the Vandals near midfield from their own 48. Temple bringing the rush. Challenge rolling right. He's got a man wide open. That's Montgomery again at the 32. Up to the 20, brought down near the 15 yard line. He was left wide open, and Challenge had eyes for him the whole way. Well, what you might pass. remember that play from the first quarter with Montgomery on the wheel route. The only, di only difference here is Challenge rolls out to the right, pulling the Temple defense with him, and you can't pull that off unless, the, unless you have a strong arm. Chad Challenge, folks, has a strong arm. Montgomery might finish this day over 100 yards receiving instead of rushing. From the 16-yard line, Challenge throws on the near side to Epps. It is incomplete. They say he trapped it. Yeah, threw it just a little bit low. Yeah, trying to trying to make something happen out of this read option. Reading the defender flies up to him, and you can see it clearly hits the ground. Spread formation here on second down and 10. Idaho threatening once again in the red zone against one of the tougher red zone defenses in the country. Watch out, here's Epps. Can't get the first down, face mask. There's two or three flags out there. They saw that one. Yeah, this will be half the distance of the goal. Personal foul, face mask. Right now, these receivers for Idaho just too fast for the defensive backs. I tell you, uh, Yowell's playing some standout defense over the course of the first few weeks. They've really buttoned down things inside the 20. Well, they really have. I mean, they've 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 27 percent of the time opponents score touchdowns in the red zone against Temple, but they're going to be tested here with first and goal from the five. Well, they would be happy to keep Idaho off the scoreboard or at least three points. The Vandals trying to extend the lead, which stands at four right now. Deion Watson split out wide. He's on the far side, actually near side of the field. First and goal for the Vandals. On the pitch, Montgomery can't spring it loose, no gain. And we talked to the coaches prior to the game about, uh, from Temple anyway, about what is it about being in this end of the field? They don't really do anything schematically. They don't make changes to personnel. It's just a, it's really just a mindset. They're not going to allow people to get into the end zone. If they give up a field goal, so be it. But they're not going to give up touchdowns. And you can see there, uh, looked like a well-designed play for Idaho, but just great reaction by this Temple defense. Chalich has thrown three touchdown passes this season. Second down, goal to go from the five. Montgomery, the man in the backfield, takes the pitch. He's got room. He's to the three. He is in for the touchdown. Montgomery finds pay dirt for the second time this afternoon. First in the air and this time on the ground. Well, they were looking forward to having this young man come in and contribute. The true freshman, Richard Montgomery out of Jacksonville, Florida, and he can flat out fly. There he is, Montgomery, number four, getting the handshakes. And here's Austin Rico on to attempt the point after. And it's through. 14 to three, and Idaho rings the bell here in Moscow. Well, they haven't been in this position very often this season, Sam, finding themselves behind. Again, it was the same play as before, this time to the left, and you have more field to work with. Great decision there. You're on you're on, you're on the right hash. You run that ball to the left and just make Temple try to try to catch up to you. Right now, Vandals are just too fast. And when you talk about plays inside the five-yard line, you immediately think about the offensive line, which did get a great push there. But you saw Lovett, the wide receiver, 
holding the block until the very end, pulling off. And how many times, Bill, do you see one of those plays come back because a wide receiver gets called for holding? Well, and they run those plays in practice. The thing they tell their wide receivers is just get the initial push. They don't need much here because they only need five yards to gain. And again, you've got the speed of Montgomery. So it's not like you're out in the middle of the field where you have to maintain that block for you know, a little bit longer. Nice initial contact. Get a stalemate. Get into the end zone. And here's Rico, who has plenty of leg. He'll tee it up. Anderson and Gilmore back to return for the Owls, who have yet to find the end zone. One field goal so far. What a turnaround for this team after that 42 nothing shellacking last week in nearby Pullman. That one sails into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and the Owls will take over from the 25. Well, it's been a while since Temple's been on the field. That was a long drive for Idaho. Chewed up a lot of the clock, which, again, they've done very well this year. Difference being this time, they actually put some points on the board versus giving the ball back to their opponent. So Montgomery capping off a nine play 80 yard scoring drive that encompassed 323 a five yard touchdown run it's 14 to three I know Montgomery by the way now with three receptions for 96 yards and a touchdown and Chad challenge completing four of his last five passes so got back on track after the slow start. Run going nowhere. Taking the snap was actually Chris Coyer. You remember that name, Owl fans, as the quarterback last year. They've been lining him up this year as a tight end. They'll split him out wide this time. Every so often, they'll put him in that wildcat position. So it's back to Riley now. But he's the second leading receiver on the team. They haven't thrown it his way yet. There's a throw down field incomplete and no flags tight coverage once again I tell you what this secondary for the Vandals playing some solid football well they're taking their shots the problem is they're taking their shots on second and long and if you don't hit it now you're in a situation at third and ten where defense can pin their ears back a little bit Solomon Dixon on the coverage great job really running stride for side again I know looks like the faster football team to me. Riley pumps, throws, has a man again overthrown and incomplete. And you know what? That's a dangerous pass. Williams, the safety was closing in quick. We've got a Temple offensive lineman, another offensive lineman down. Looks like they're going to be able to get him up and get him off of the field. Zach Hooks. Hooks back on his feet. It looks like he'll be able to get back towards the sidelines. We'll take the break, folks. 747. Fourth down and long coming up for the Owls. Idaho leads it by 11, 14 to 3. Due to time constraints, we now move forward in game action. All right, homecoming weekend. Starting actually all of last weekend with a soccer game against Grand Canyon. And here we are today on a Saturday afternoon in Moscow where the Idaho Vandals lead the Owls of Temple 17 to 3. We're joined right now up in the press box by Don Burnett. He is the interim president here at the University of Idaho. And boy, oh boy, I'm sure you're enjoying this football game right now, aren't you? Well, the team has been improving in practice all along. It just hasn't showed up on the scoreboard yet, but today I think they're showing their real potential. Certainly uh, enjoying the ball game and, and, you know, seeing some old faces from the past, everybody on campus this week in Moscow to enjoy uh, homecoming. I'd like to ask you first, Don, about uh, student athletes and, and the role they play at the U of I. And remember, the first word in that is student athletes. I think you're exactly right to put the emphasis that way. 
way. Many people don't realize that at the University of Idaho and many other, but not all universities, the student athletes have a higher average grade point average than the student body as a whole. They have a higher graduation rate than the student body as a whole. They bring us a lot of diversity that we wouldn't otherwise have elsewhere in the university. So they contribute a lot to the academic side, not just to the athletic and outside vision side of the university. Well, absolutely. So great to see that and some stellar uh, stand-up citizens out there. What, what is the relationship between athletics and, and the university as a whole? Well, I think one of the ways in which the two have a common interest is that we think about what the careers are going to be of our student athletes and students in general. And what employers tell us is that they not only want classroom learning, but they want to see people who overcome obstacles, who are good team players, who are resilient, who are self-starters, who are uh, subject to uh, criticism and can bounce back from it and be accountable. All of those things are taught in an athletic program. So we think that it's an integral part of preparing youth for the future. And I tell you what, evidenced by the game we're seeing today, a lot of teams after a, you know, a not so solid start, they regain that composure and they show their leadership as men. And that's what well, we're seeing have. this afternoon. And Coach Petrino has been a real disciplinarian. I've talked to parents of many of our students. They are very glad to have their young men playing in a disciplined program. And I think some of the outcomes of uh, discipline are being evidenced here today. And, and last thing before we wrap things up, just, you know, the conference, the, the landscape is obviously changed in college football and college athletics as a whole. Uh, how are you adjusting to things now as an independent team before moving on to New Horizons? We're playing a very daunting schedule here as an independent. Next year, as you are intimating, we'll be in the Sun Belt. I think our feeling is that the NCAA is going through a lot of transition right now, and we just want to position ourselves in the top division long enough to be able to see how it's going to break out. But I think I think we're well positioned for the future, and we have some flexibility. All right, Don Burnett, interim president here at the University of Idaho. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, it's our pleasure. And we appreciate your covering Vandal Athletics. Thanks oh, we'll a lot. We'll be here I anytime. All right, thanks very much to Interim President Don Burnett for joining us here on the Halftime Show here on SWX. Idaho leads it 17-3 against Temple. When we come back, we'll have more halftime coverage, including Rob Spears, Director of Athletics. We'll stop in and we'll talk U of I football and athletics. Stay tuned. We are at halftime here at the Kimmy Dome. Idaho leading Temple 17 to 3 and really a, a schooling right now for the University of Idaho. Out gaining Temple 281 to 146. Let's take a look at those first half highlights and really starting with this pass to Richard Montgomery. Well, just a great job of execution. The wheel route down the right sideline. Chad Chalitz hits him in stride and you've seen a couple of times this half how fast Mr. Montgomery is in a great evidence there. Uh, Temple getting on the scoreboard at 739 in the first on the Nick Visco 25 yard field goal 17 to 3 after one and then Chalich on the play fake going back to Montgomery in the air. Same play just Chalich rolls out to the opposite side. Temple flows with it big play for Montgomery and he gets a chance to finish it off with the five yard touchdown run at three catches 96 yards and a touchdown for Montgomery in that five yard touchdown run. Let's take a look here at the game plan how each team is looking. Well you know for Temple you know, the red zone defense hasn't hasn't uh, disappointed. They've done a, a pretty nice job but it's been the big plays that they've had trouble with. They've made the one kick that they've tried but it really hasn't been much of a factor for Idaho. They'll make the most of your time. They've been on the field most of this first half as they've been throughout this whole season and 17 points on the board. They've already met, uh, gone above their season average. So great job there. And third down defense, Sam, you talked about it. I think at one point Temple was one of nine on third down. Idaho's doing an outstanding job. And as usually the case, you see it on the scoreboard. Yeah, one of nine for the Owls and Idaho six of nine and that has been one of the big differences. Chad Chalich uh, accounting for nearly 250 yards of total offense 15 of 24 198 yards passing one touchdown sacked just one time and on the ground he is the game's leading rusher eight carries for 47 net yards. That's the story of the ball game 17 to 3 when we come back the third quarter live from the Kibbe Dome after Welcome to the Windy Palouse on this Saturday afternoon, turning into evening here in Moscow. 
We're on the campus of the University of Idaho where the Vandals lead it 17 to 3 in line for their first win of this 2013 season. Sam Adams and Bill Ames in the Bob Curtis press box. Glad to have you wherever you may be watching from around the country. So Chad Chalich leading the way, 198 yards passing, a touchdown. Also 47 yards on the ground. And Riley, Connor Riley, the quarterback for Temple, 11 of 26 for 83 yards and really contending with a fierce secondary for the Vandals. Well, great play by the secondary of the Vandals, no question about it. But he's also had at least five drops that I can count. Uh, so his receivers have to help him out. D uh, Idaho's doing a good enough job covering them. They can't uh, further add on to it by not making plays. Vandals on this kickoff, sponsored by Dishman, Dodge, Ram, Chrysler, and Jeep. And a nice return out to the 26-yard line. Now there's Montgomery once again. Looked like he had a pretty good seam there. Closed quickly on the coverage by Temple. So Chalich on to guide this offense. Montgomery, the leading receiver in the first half, three for 96. Najee Lovett also with three catches for 39 yards. Desmond Epps, three for 14. Deion Watson also with two catches for 16 yards. Now Chalich is your leading rusher. Continues to be an issue, but it's worked out well thus far today. Montgomery in the backfield. And Chalich doing such a great job carrying the fake. But when all is said and done, Epps is brought down in the backfield. Yeah, it looks like we might have another formation penalty perhaps against Idaho. Flag was thrown right at the snap of the ball. And the question for Temple is whether they would accept it or not. You have second and 14 right now, second and 13. Perhaps you just take the down. Absolutely, because it goes from first and 15 to second and 13. Mike's not on, and that'll happen coming out of the locker room. So there you go. Really, it's a difference of two yards, and if you trade it down for two yards, you don't have to be a day trader to figure that one out. Well, a much better job there by Temple of just, again, staying in their lanes, not overcommitting to Chalich, who has 50 yards or 47 yards net rushing. Able to stop that play. Second down and long. Hand off, and this is Montgomery, a stiff arm, trying to get to the 30-yard line. He's down at the 34. Nice run by Montgomery. We have another Temple player on the ground right there at that tackle. Looks like Anthony Roby. A junior quarterback, uh, cornerback, Roby. We're going to take the timeout, folks. For the player down 17 to 3, Vandals early in the third. A rare no conversion there for Idaho. Six of nine prior to that on third down situations. Rico, a high, long punt. Back to the 18 yard line, no return. Great coverage on special teams. Well, and a great punt by Austin Rico, who ended that first half with a disappointing effort from 50 yards on a field goal attempt. This one, he hangs long and deep and gives his coverage men plenty of time to get downfield and make a play. So credit Austin Rico, that excellent punt. The Vandals with 13 first downs on the afternoon to Temple's 10. And again, 281 yards of total offense for Idaho at the half. 146 for the Temple Owls. From the 20-yard line, the handoff. Harper had been very quiet in that first half, and he gains nine. Heels overhead there. I'll tell you, Solomon Dixon is having a heck of a football game with a couple of great pass breakups in that first half. And then here he comes and takes on the much bigger running back, Barber, and cuts him right down. Second down, two to go. Quick throw out in the flat. And that's a first down reception for Christopher. His team had been plagued by drops in the first half, but the sophomore, Christopher, reels that one in. 
Well, they started the game with that conservative passing game. Again, just trying to take what the defense was giving them, and they had success. After the conversion on second down, back to the running game. There's Harper. Harper up to the 45 to the 50 into Vandal territory. Nice pick up for Harper, the running back. Harper gets up a little lame and has to go off to the sideline. So they'll come back with Zaire Williams. 18 yards on that pickup. He's had runs of now 22 and 18. From the pistol, Zaire Williams now in the ball game on the play. Fake quarterback taking it out of the pocket and on the run. A yard shy of the first down marker is Riley. Now, great job there by Riley. Again, looked a little like Chad Chouch there. Really sold the run fake. Ran a man off downfield and it looked like Riley even had thoughts of throwing the ball, which meant that that defensive back had to stay with the receiver. Opened up plenty of room for number 12 to get down the field and pick up a nice game. On second down, handoff going to Williams. Williams will get the first down. A stiff arm up to the 30, down the sideline to the 20, 15, before he's finally brought down out of bounds near the 12-yard line. Another great run here by the Temple ground game. Well, I'll tell you, there's something was said in that locker room where they've just taken it upon themselves to get a little, do a little better job. Might have been a holding call on Omusu, but nothing called and a big play by Williams down the field, mostly doing it with the running game. Down to the 12-yard line inside the red zone. Up the middle is Williams down to the 7. It's another big run here for the Owls, who are clicking a here little, early in the third quarter. Well, a little more pep in the step of these Temple Owls. And now you've got a knee injury here, and it looks like it's Zaire Williams, who, again, Idaho came in, whoever that uh, player was, came in low to make the tackle. And it looks like Zaire Williams may have taken one right on the knee there. And he looks like he's in quite a bit of pain. Take another look at it here. And again, it looked like it might have been the linebacker. Yeah, that was number 23, Mark Millen, who came in. Williams carrying it back-to-back -back times for a gross of 34 yards 28 and 6 writhing in pain you can tell they're tending to that left knee and, and you know and that's been a that's been a there's been a lot of discussion around that Sam the, the, with the defenders you know really at a, at a disadvantage many think because they can't tackle up high they can't come in around the shoulders or the head for risk that they may get kicked out of a, a game for a half so they come in low, and, and that's and this is one of the risks of that is you're going to see some knee injuries. Looks like they were looking at the knee cap as uh, he hobbles off the sideline under his own power. That, of course, a very good sign for young 23. So Zaire Williams will check out freshman out of New Jersey. So they've used Harper and Williams. The feature backs and both have had success, both averaging well over five yards per carry. Uh, and Harper again, they more of the, the bruising back, but but he even went out hobbled. So if Williams can't come back in, Harper uh, he'll be the man. Second down. Can still get a first down here. And Coyer takes the snap. Fighting for yardage. Not going to get it. Coyer, last year's quarterback, now a tight end this year, lined up as the quarterback in that snap. I wonder, and it was run all the way. You know, I wonder if, if he stepped on the scale this fall at 6'3", 250 pounds, and they said, son, we'll let you keep number 10. But we're going to move you outside just a little bit. It's back to Riley now. Big third down. They have not been able to convert for much of this ball game. How the Owls? Here comes the crowd noise. Harper on the handoff dances and in. Harper for the touchdown from five yards out on third down. And there you go. First touchdown of the ball game for the Temple Owls. Well, and some red zone offense finally for Temple. And boy, what a way to come out of that half. You get a three and out. 
on the defense or on uh, Idaho. You're forcing the punt. Then you come down 80 yards on a drive. You chew up some time, mainly running the ball hard, just like this, which you couldn't do in the first half. And a huge start to this second half. And you take this crowd out of the game who had really been into it. Low snap, Nick Visco with the kick, and it splits the uprights. And at 11-27 here in the third, it's back to now a one-possession ball game. Vandals 17, the Owls 10. This college football broadcast is brought to you by Dishman. For Spokane's best selection of Jeep, visit the 10-acre Superstore at Dishman. Dishman, Dodge, Ram, Chrysler, and Jeep. All right, back on the campus here of the University of Idaho in Moscow. Eight play, 81-yard scoring drive, kicked off, uh, capped off by the Kenneth Harper five-yard touchdown run. First TD of the ball game for the Owls, who trail it 17 to 10. And for all the good feelings we had at halftime about Idaho, it's now down to a one-score game. Montgomery Back from quickly. the three. Up to the 20. He's got a hole up to the 25. And out to the 27-yard line. Another nice return for Montgomery. And there are flags coming in at the end of the play. Well, th this is going to be an interesting call because this flag came in from about 30 yards outside of outside of where this play was. First of all, great arm by that official right there at the top. And, and I'll tell you, that's that's an awful call right there. Number 30 for Idaho, Tom Hennessy had his man pinned on the ground, pancake block, and the official calls him for holding. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen it. You pancake somebody, you leave them there. That's not a hold. Let's have another look, see what Bill Ames saw. It's right up there at the upper left-hand screen, and, and he's got a man on the ground. The, you got two officials standing right around that block, and a man 30 yards away throws the flag. Unbelievable. Challenge will set up now under center as this drive will start from the 13. On the play fake, Challenge steps up, gets rid of the football. Najee Lovett, the intended man, almost made the one-handed grab. Credit Challenge, the pass rush was coming, got rid of the football and put one right on Lovett. And I'll tell you what, Challenge took an absolute shot at the end of this throw. He got hit and lifted up and driven back. You'll be able to see it right as he throws the football here, right there and gets planted and how he ever got anywhere near the receiver <laughs> it's a miracle that kid is tough and he can throw the football yeah he's got some moxie does this redshirt freshman out of quarter lane it's an incompletion second down on the read go to the ground attack Jarrell Brown Takes the handoff. Well, talk about the running game for Temple, which was stagnant at best in the first half. Well, here now in the third, Harper, eight carries, 58 net yards, one touchdown, 7.2 yards per carry. Zaire Williams, six carries, 48 yards, eight yards per carry. And this coming after that first half where they didn't run the football at all. Just 13 attempts on the ground for Temple. You well, might have found something. And on defense, they're channeling Idaho a little bit because they're the team now flying around and making big plays. Third down. Challenge on the run. Another hard hit. He's down at the 21. A long two, maybe even three yards short of the first down. Well, Brandon Shippen got a little tired of watching Chad Challenge just run away free and and that's an ice bath drive for Chad Challenge because he took a couple of shots. And now you've got two series back to back to start this half of three and out for Idaho. And Man, that helmet almost came off. You just can't afford to take shots like that if you're Chad Challenge. I don't know if they teach the slide here. He's a good enough athlete to do it. But you can't last a season. Wonderful punt here by Austin Rico. Alderman from the 20. Up to the 25, down at the 27 after another booming punt from Austin Rico. Rico now his fifth punt on the afternoon. He's already had three inside the 20 out of those four. And Paul Petrino still talking to Chad Challich down there around the 30-yard line, having discussion with him about 
you know, what exactly are you seeing out there? Let's talk about this. And that's some just great one-on-one -on -one time, head coach to quarterback. Love to see that. Owls take over from their own 28. Trailing by seven. Riley, the quarterback, pass rush coming. Ford wraps him up for the tackle in the sack at the 20-yard line. Well, that'll get him going. Max Ford had a big first half. And if the offense can't get things going, well, you might as, might as well get it, get it going with the defense. And nobody else does it better for this team anyway than Max Ford, the junior out of Woodenville, Washington. Dad played just up the road at Washington State. And he's been a wonderful player for these Vandals. Already on the season coming into the ball game, a tackle for loss, a sack, a fumble forced, and two fumble recoveries. And he's piling on the stats today. Second down and long from the 22. Riley with time downfield has a man overthrown once again. The intended man was Anderson. I'll tell you, Anderson actually had a step there, but Riley just hasn't been able to connect. He's overthrown now three of those balls. I know who's just doing a very nice job with that man coverage on the outside. And once again, I think that's Solomon Dixon on the coverage. Seventeen yards to go here on third down. Underneath, caught up to the 25, back to the original line of scrimmage. So the defense holds for the Vandals here. I, I think that was, oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was going to say it's a crucial drive here. You need to answer the call here. Well, a great stop, a great stop by the side of defense because you want to get your offense back on the field. They've had no luck here in the first half. Get them back out there, get them going on some things, uh, and rather than have to sit there on the sideline and just, you know, continue to dwell on what hasn't worked. Get back out there, try to get something going. So, you know, this defense really has stepped up big today. Desmond Epps, the junior. He's a junior college transfer out of Sacramento, California. Back to return from the 30. He'll take the punt from the 32. With room on the near sideline up to the 40 before he's brought down. If you were watching these teams for the first time, you wouldn't believe the Vandals were 0-4 on the season and the Owls were 0-3. Both teams playing at a high level today. I think they are. I mean, you know, I know that you could say, well, they're two bad football teams playing against each other, Sam. These don't look like two bad football teams. I mean, I, they've had, uh, they, they haven't played well, but I think most of what we've seen early in the season from these two teams has more to do with the first year head coach getting used to a system, getting the way that they want to do, getting used to the way they want to do things. And now they're starting to figure it out. Rob Spear talked about that at halftime with us. From the 40 yard line, challenge a quick throw. And a quick catch on the far sideline. That's Roman Runner. And Runner, a short gain up to the 44. A gain of four. Uh, and I'll tell you, Temple is certainly flying around uh, now coming out of the locker room. We've seen it on two straight drives. They're stewing it. They're getting, you know, five, six, seven guys to the football after a catch. You weren't seeing that in the first half. Second down now. Two tight end set. Quick throw now on the near sideline. There he is again down the sideline. Runner to the 30, still going. Finally brought down at the 20 yard line. Well, we haven't seen a whole lot of Roman Runner, but what we know about this young man is he's big, strong, and he's fast enough that if he can get by you, he's going to get down the field quickly. A couple of big plays for the senior wide receiver out of Oakley, California. 36 yards on that pass reception. Challenge, again a throw. Now it's Love It. Love It out in space. We'll pick up five. Does Challenge look like a redshirt freshman to you? You know, he's always looked older than his years even when we you know we covered him in high school football at Coeur d'Alene High School just down the road from here he always just had that presence about him and you know I, it was great that he got a chance the last year to redshirt and watch this I'm sure that that's helping him as he's out here competing here today on the receiver screen here's Epps Epps brought down by three tacklers they'll give him forward progress up to the 13 
which means he'll be about three yards shy of that first down. Yeah, Temple read that extremely well, and you know we talked about it as one of the the keys to this game is the red zone off, or red zone defense, excuse me, of Temple. I've done a pretty good job of that, and here now third and three, they're tested once again. Four completions now on this drive for Chad Challenge. Another critical third down. That's Montgomery in the backfield, already with two touchdowns to his name. There he is underneath, makes the catch. Good tackle out in open space. Brings up fourth down on a loss of one. Well, and he's made so many great decisions today, Chad Challenge, but that's one that I'm sure he would like to have back. He had room to run, and he's got to know that where Montgomery is, where he's throwing this football with a man bearing down, he doesn't have a chance of picking up that first down. So press up a little bit more, become more of a run option, and then perhaps you could get that ball out late for the first down. And here is Austin Rico on to attempt the field goal. This will be a 30-yard attempt. He is one for two on the afternoon. This one's got the leg off the scoreboard and good. Got to be careful. You break it, you buy it. Tell you what, we got to get Rob Spear and President Burnett back up here. They might uh, have something to say to Mr. Rico about hitting <laughs> that big, nice scoreboard. Uh, I think they'll take the points, though. The lead back to 10, 5.09 to play in the third. Idaho 20 and Temple 10. All right, six play, 47 yard scoring drive. Just took 302 off the clock, capped off by the 30 yard field goal by Austin Rico. And here we are, 509 to play in the third, 20 to 10, Idaho. Well, after getting stymied those first two drives of this half, being able to put some points on the board, awfully big for Idaho, clearly a two score game now. But you also maybe get a little bit of confidence back. Challenge right on his season average right now, which has been around 66, 67 percent. He's completed 20 of 31, 245. The big number, Bill Ames, though, one sack. Now, for a team that's given up 25 this year, I would tend to agree with you. That's the highest in the nation. Anderson thinking about it. He'll take a knee. This drive will start from the 25. So Challenge. 245 yards in the air, 53 in the ground. So he is just a couple yards shy of 300 total yards on offense. Well, and they've done it a number of ways. I mean, he's had guys that have made plays after the catch, runner on that last drive, just taking a nice, easy hitch route and getting down the sideline. But he's also thrown the ball down the field. So it's been a it's been a nice mix, really, of, of the short and long plays. The one thing Idaho's gone away from a bit here in the second half is that running game. Seems like Temple is a little bit more locked into the run. This is Coyle. Who will take the snap. On the read option. Running all the way. And the thing is with him, and he comes in almost as a wildcat quarterback, if you will. But you have to remember, he did play the quarterback position last year, so he is a threat to throw the football. And he stays back there on the second down play. So Coyer on the gain. Moves it three yards. And they go back to Coyer. Coyer's going to get the first down. Well, they might be onto something with this running game. The passing game certainly not working out for Temple. 13 of 29 for just 94 yards. And Riley's still in the game. He's split out wide to the left here. So it's not as if uh, Coyle's in here uh, replacing Riley. This He'll is a true Wildcat. Take it again. He'll take it for a yard and a half. So Idaho's starting to key in on Coyer. And here comes Riley back, it, it appears anyway. Just one more thing to think about if you're the Vandal defense. Second down, eight to go. Harper is the running back. Has 58 yards on the ground so far. Helps pick up the rush, and boy, did the quarterback take a shot from Ford. Well, and finally, he has a receiver that makes a play for him. Harrison goes down and, and gets it, but what a nice throw by Riley. 
with pressure coming right in his face, trying to throw, go out to the left. That is not an easy throw, folks. And Harrison goes down and gets it, makes it a much more manageable third down. Third down and a long four. Timeout on the field. That's on the crowd. Give that one to the crowd here. Well, absolutely. It's the crowd and also the importance of the down. I think this coaching staff at Temple understands that, you know, down two scores, you're running to the end here of the third quarter. Make sure you pick up this first down. Get a play in there that everybody's on the same page with and keep these chains moving. I don't know that they, they think they can afford to give the ball back even at this stage in the game. What a game Max Ford is putting together. Three unassisted tackles. Has one sack and two tackles for loss. It's been an all-around great defensive effort so far. Limiting Temple to 50 total plays on offense for 226 yards. The big number, two of 11 on third downs. Four yards to go here on this third down situation. And it's Coyer in the backfield as the quarterback. He took out the running back. It's Coyer, though, who gets the first down run. Still moving as the pile moves forward into Idaho territory. Big third down conversion here for the Owls. Well, wow, just a great read there by Coyer. Again, he's played this position full before. It's not something that's new for him. And he does a great job of keeping it in the getting up field and dragging people another few yards. The drive continues now from the Vandal 48. Riley now at the quarterback position. On the play fake. They got a man streaking downfield, wide open at the five-yard line, leaping and incomplete again. Just a little bit overthrown. And I tell you what, Nate Harrison was wide open. Well, he was open, and it was a little overthrown, but I think Harrison needs to just continue to run. He's looking back far too early for that football. You look at him, he's looking back the whole way, and that just slows you down. If you just keep running and then look back, you know, right before the football gets there, you've got a chance to catch that ball. I think that one's on your receiver. Second down, 10 yards to go for the Owls, who trail it here by 10. Blitz coming. They're sending the house on the rollout. Flags coming. That'll be a hold. Yeah, now you're going to call that one on the running back, Harper. Trying to create space for his running back and just held on to that defensive end. Riley asking for a face mask at the end of that play. Plenty of flags, but I don't know if any of them are for the face mask. So there you go. Yeah, that's a big one. So many close misses for this Temple offense throwing the ball down the field. You saw the little tug there at the yeah. end of the play. Or a big tug, depending on which way you're looking at it. Second down and 20 from their own 42 after that holding penalty. Riley back to pass, fires over the middle, man open near the first down marker. Fitzpatrick with the catch, about a yard short. Well, amazing how good a quarterback can look when his receivers make catches for him. That ball's on the money. Fitzpatrick looks it in. Big third down once again for Temple. Boy, they blew that play up right from the start. Great defensive stop here. Wow. Uh, and once again, in a big third down, Temple Temple goes backwards. Uh, looks like a player for Idaho needs to come out, Mark Millen, who was in on that tackle. And what a big play. That takes him out of even thinking about trying to go for it on fourth down. They come out in punting formation. Huge stop for Idaho. 
Layton, who was nicked earlier in the game, back out to punt. And Desmond Epps is back to return at the Vandal 10. No return here into the end zone. Touchback now for the Idaho Vandals with 127 to play in the third. Night and day, folks. If you're joining us and you watched that game last week against Washington State, totally different team on the field here this afternoon. Well, and they're playing an opponent that's certainly not at the level of Washington State. But Idaho is one of those teams who certainly looks much different at home. Had a, a tough loss earlier in the year to Northern Illinois here in the Kibbe Dome. Looks like they're going to come out with a run to start this drive. Jarrell Brown up the middle. That's four yards. Now five up to the 25. Boy, when you have a a running game that sets the table for everything else it it doesn't just take the burden off your passing game but it also helps out your defense because you can extend drives take a lot more time off the clock yeah it's a it, it's that power running game although here comes challenge there he is up to the 35 it's a foot race to midfield to the 40 to the 30 tripped up at the 25 yard line nearly took it the distance why do you need a power running game when you got Chad Challenge on your offense? Great job once again with that read option, keeping the ball. And I 52 talk, yards on the carry. Well, when I said earlier he may not be the fleetest quarterback, I take it back. A shoestring tackle is the only thing that kept him from getting in the end zone for six. Great read, a great execution by Chad Challenge once again, piling up the yards. Challenge to throw. There he is, old reliable Watson. That passing tandem that really took off at Coeur d'Alene High School. Boy, it would be something if Idaho could actually get it into the end zone here. Make this a three-score game with as much trouble as Temple's had on offense as they're going to let this clock run out and get it into the fourth quarter. Chad Chalich over 100 yards rushing now for the ball game, and by the end of the day, he may pass for over 300 as well. At the end of three, Idaho leads it by 10, 20 to 10, and they are driving. Fourth quarter coming up, folks. Don't go anywhere. for the fourth quarter at the Kibbe Dome. Sam Adams, Bill Ames here on SWX. The Vandals in search of their first win of the 2013 season in the Petrino era. 20 to 10 against Temple as we start the fourth quarter. Second down to go. Second down, excuse me, and five to go inside the 20-yard line. And Chad Chalich continues to impress that quarterback on the rollout. Looking, throwing, takes a shot. And I tell you, after all these shots, he's still quick to get up. Well, you know, it's it's great to see him. He's a tough kid, but you know, I, I just I mean, does he not have no <laughs> nerve endings? I mean, <laughs> you can't leave your feet. That's the problem. He's throwing it and leaving his feet, and that's just going to make that that tackle that much tougher to take for him. So that's one of the things that Chad will have to I think work through as he as he matures, which he's most certainly will. But we got to get him through this game and through this season as. I think Petrino wants a timeout, knowing this quarterback may uh, may be having a little air issue right now, <laughs> trying to get to, trying to get his breath. Well, very important, obviously, part of this offense. And if don't don't take my word for it, just look at the stat sheet: 21 of 32, 250 yards, a touchdown, 10 carries, 105 yards. So he's responsible for 355 yards of total offense and counting. We still have a full fourth quarter here. Yeah, it's just it's just impressive what he's doing. And and that's why, Sam, I say what I do about, you know, him throwing the football and taking some of those shots. He is so valuable to this offense. 
he has to take care of himself. And, and that last time out that Paul Petrino called, I, I think Petrino would just as soon have seen Chalich make that call. If you're not feeling 100%, don't be a tough guy. Call the timeout. Make sure you get yourself collected and get back out there. That's one of those things that'll be a learning opportunity coming out of this game for Chad Challenge. Empty backfield here on third down. Idaho and even 50% on conversions on third down. Challenge on the run and brought down for a loss. And that's a big stop for Temple because another touchdown I think would have sealed this game for Idaho. Now you limit them to potentially three points, and you still are two touchdowns from being able to take the lead. Austin Rico now on to attempt a fourth field goal. He is two for three on the afternoon from the left hash. 38-yard attempt. It's got the distance. It's right through the uprights. Tell you what, you talk about the comfort zone of that young man, the true freshman out of Central Valley. He has found it. After a one for five start kicking the football, he is now three for four on the afternoon. Three more points for Idaho. It's now 23 to 10. It can't be dumb here on homecoming weekend. And Idaho now. 14 minutes and 10 seconds away from its first victory in the Paul Petrino era. Now Paul Petrino is watching him go up and down the sideline. You can tell he's not very happy that they came away with just three there. He's not the type of offensive coach that likes to settle for field goals. Rico's field goal making it now 23 to 10. He's responsible for the game's last six points. High booming kick one yard deep into the end zone Anderson on the return out to the 15th of the 20 25 and out at the 30. I has got to do a better job of covering kicks Rico's doing a great job of hanging up high like you talked about putting the the returner three yards deep you shouldn't uh, allow a man to come out to the 30 yard line or nearly the 30 yard line on a kick like that so uh, coverage issues to be sure uh, on that last kickoff. Idaho playing an independent schedule this year until they move over to the Sun Belt next year. They'll be having uh, every week weekly awards for independent schools. Um, I have to imagine that for special teams that that young man Rico is going to be on the list. On the quick pitch little shovel pass Anderson getting locked up by Jordan. Well, I'll tell you, Jordan throwed, showed some very nice speed trying to get to Anderson there, coming across, pushing him out of bounds for a short game. Jay Sean Jordan, sophomore out of Seattle. Boy, the, you know, you got to think the, the face mask thing should go both ways sometimes, shouldn't it? That was close to being an offensive face mask if there is such a thing. I know there is not. Second down, a long five. This is Riley. Rifles one on the slant. It is caught. And that'll move the chains on the reception. 85, Hairston. Well, I'll tell you, if Hairston could have kept his feet there, Idaho really didn't do much in the way of trying to tackle him. And if he keeps his feet and his balance, he's up the field. He kind of went down on his own there. Nobody back to be able to stop him. Well, Idaho able to score here now in the fourth. His last two scoring drives, though, taking up just barely five minutes. So coming away with six points and taking off those five minutes. This game is not over yet, folks. Still a two-possession ball game. Riley, plenty of time, has a receiver wide open. Alderman, Alderman to the 10-yard line and in for the score. Wow, just that quickly, things go silent. Here in the Kibbe Dome. Riley's done a great job of throwing that ball. Again, this that little, a little post route in the middle of the field. And Alderman first catches it. And then poor tackling by Idaho. A couple of misses there. And great effort by that little man getting into the end zone. And just like that, once again, Temple back in this game.
The PAT nearly took out the camera. Good aim by Visco. Well, and 50, a great job by Layton. 51 yards on this pass completion, by far the longest of the day for Temple. Boy, a high snap on that on that point after. Previous long on a passing play, 19. So 51 yards on the Riley touchdown pass. And you haven't seen the pressure on the quarterback that we saw in that first half from Idaho. Riley seems to have much more time to throw, and a comfortable quarterback is going to be able to make those throws most of the time. It's Riley's second touchdown pass of the season, and Alderman's first touchdown catch. The lead is cut to six with 12.59 to play. And Temple hanging in there. They've hung in there with everybody they've played so far. Notre Dame 28 to 6. They hung with them at the start of the season. Houston, they held Houston to 22 points in that 22 13 loss and then lost to Fordham by one. That was the huge, huge upset. That week after, Houston laid 65 on their opponent. So, you know, I don't think this environment is too much for this Temple team. You know, they've played in South Bend, Indiana, as you corrected me before, not North Bend. Uh, so, they certainly know that they can get back in this game quickly which they have done Montgomery the return from the six north of the 30 yard line so a nice return by Montgomery who has played well on special teams and out of the backfield offensively and most of the damage done by him has been in the air receiving those Chad challenge catches but not much here in the second half we really haven't heard his name they've come back with Darrell Brown for the most part in the backfield and Jarrell Brown still in that running back position. Three catches for 96 yards in the first half. And since then, one catch netting zero yards. Challenge to throw here on first down. Watson found a hole in that zone, wide open. He picks up six. Watson, such a nice compliment to the rest of these receivers. Most of them kind of the shorter variety, the, the quick type of receiver. Jordan, the big, long, outstretched, wide out. Montgomery on the handoff, and he's got the first down. Excuse me, 24, Jarrell Brown on the handoff. Brown gets the carry, and he does get the first down. Yeah, good hard running there by Brown. An important third down conversion there for Idaho. I always think it's important, Sam, that a team comes out after a big play score from the opposition and holds on to the ball for a matter of time to keep that offense over there since they feel so good about themselves. Don't let them back on the field right away. Inside of 12 minutes now in a six-point ball game. Challenge on the play fake and saw the pass deflected at the line of scrimmage. He was looking for the tight end. Well, and Clayton Homey wide open. Fortunate for Temple that ball got batted down because I think Homey was in a, uh, a full run to the end zone if, uh, if this ball gets completed. Now this team will use its tight ends. And look, just that's how close it was. And you, and you see 85 that he had a good five yards on his on the nearest defender. Idaho will take its second time out. One remaining. 11.51 to go here in the regulation. 23-17 Idaho with the football. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Idaho Vandal Sports Properties, LLC, an affiliate of Learfield Sports, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Idaho. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express written consent of Idaho Vandal Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited. 10 to go from the 40 pass incomplete to Epps the intended man from Chad Chalich well catchable ball for Epps there maybe a little underthrown but certainly one that we've seen him go down and get big third down we thought one of the keys for Temple here was you know third down defense 
typically been pretty good on the flip side. Idaho not been very strong, although today it worked out very well. Now a long third, third down, 10 yards to go. Need to get to midfield, the 50-yard line. Challenge throws over the middle. Short pass is caught out to the 45 for Montgomery is brought down. Gain of six to Montgomery, four yards to go. Fourth down coming up. Again, Paul Petrino not real happy with Challenge. He's got to know the situation. Third and 10. You know, throwing the ball underneath is great, but not much of a chance you're going to be able to complete it. Paul Petrino wants first downs. And Austin Rico on the punt again. Averaging 47.8 yards per punt on five attempts so far. Another tall, booming kick. Alderman back to return from the 15. So Bill, it all comes down to this here. I mean, this is this is clutch time here. Now, obviously, this game could go down to the wire, but this midway point of the third or fourth quarter in well, a one possession game, this is where it's won. Yeah, I, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's 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 quite winning time because that's usually you're talking five six minutes. A lot of time left in this fourth quarter, but I think this is a statement type of drive for both both teams. I mean, Temple came out, hit a big strike. Uh, Idaho might be a little still a little bit stoned from that. So this is an important drive for for both both schools. The drive will start from the 14 on the play fake. Almost intercepted. Almost. And you know that's a pick six. And you know who, who knows that better than anyone is Mark Mion. Well, uh, Mion really should have had that ball. I don't know that he he picked it up quite in time to be able to to really get his hands up there. You see him looking at the receiver. Yeah, they work on those drills every single day in practice, and he's got to make that catch. Would have been a huge, huge play. Instead, it's a second down and 10 situation. This young man, Riley, winning the starting quarterback job in the 2013 spring game, fires one far side, tight coverage, quick hit. Harper running after the catch. Manages to eke out a yard on that reception. Well, just a tough guy to bring down. Looked like they had him for a loss. He gets about three to four yards after contact to turn it into a positive gain. And once again, a big third down for this offensive temple. Son of an Army Lieutenant Colonel. He's lived in 11 different places growing up, but he's really, really settled down in Philadelphia. Third down and eight for Riley, the quarterback. The deep drop with time over the middle, tight coverage. They want a flag. No flags coming in. Anderson, the intended man, incomplete. It's fourth down. Well, Solomon Dixon once again, and that time, my friend, he might have gotten away with one. Got there just before the ball did, but one of those bang-bang type of plays. Maybe if you're playing in Philadelphia at the link, you get that call, but not in Moscow, Idaho. Not today. And it's a fourth down. Here comes the punting unit. Layton to punt for a ninth time. You ask any coach, that's about nine times too many. Epps to return on a short punt from the 39. Epps met immediately, though, after gaining maybe four yards on the return. Well, Temple. There is a flag now back at the 20-yard line. It's not in the vicinity of where the kick happened. There is an Idaho Vandal down as well. It looks like maybe Roman runner. Yeah, that's 87. A couple of strong plays. So no foul in case you didn't hear that. So no infraction. But runner, who had that big play receiving the football, earlier in this ball game is down and that 36 yard reception senior out of Oakley California yeah kind of a possession receiver a guy that they've been able to count on over the years and I'm not sure that it's the knee they're looking at maybe more of the upper leg they'll help him to his feet no, that's good to see he's able to walk off under his own power. Uh, 
All right, so here we go, partner. 10 10 to go. A very crucial drive coming up here for the Vandals. Trying to take some time off the clock and make this back to a two possession ball game. Right now, the lead stands at six. 23 17. Just over 10 minutes to play. Chad Challenge from the shotgun. Brown, the running back, Challenge to throw. Caught by Watson. Watson met at midfield. Well, I'll tell you, Tyler Matikevich has been all over the field today. Came from his linebacker position watching that ball. And that's his 10th tackle of the game. You don't normally see your middle linebacker making a tackle out on the, out, on the outside after a hitch route. Great job of running down Watson. That's now his, I believe, 10th unassisted. Oh, boy. That's 18 that's tackles. Now 19 total. <laughs> oh, wow. Holy smokes. Yeah. 10th unassisted tackle. Challenge from the pistol formation. Second down and four to go. Carrying out the play fake. Has a man. There's Najee Lovett at the 30. Shimmy shakes down to the 20, 15. And dancing around the sidelines. Big play to Najee Lovett. Well, I'll tell you, there's just something about that sideline that Temple just doesn't want to defend. That's the third time now an Idaho receiver has been able to find wide open space and Chalice just puts it right on him. That's just a breakdown by your defense. 33 yards on the pass completion. Officials talking things over. If there's a guy open, how many times do you see a quarterback miss the open man? They don't even see him. Well. Another clock operator issue. You know, it, it's interesting, Sam. We've seen it with Riley. We, we've seen some open receivers, and he's had some overthrows. Chad Challenge hasn't. Maybe at the end of the day, when we talk about the difference in this game, Chad Challenge has made those throws to open receivers, and Riley's missed. Big completion there as the drive continues inside the 20, where Idaho would prefer six instead of three. Challenge to throw into the end zone. Najee love it. Incomplete. Now Challenge is right near the 300 yard mark for the ball game. It's just it's such an impressive, impressive effort. You, you add on to that the 102 yards of net rushing. And folks, again, a red shirt freshman. Second down. Challenge will keep it down to the 15. And here's where you'd love to get six, of course, but a field goal would be awfully nice to make this now a two-score game. That would extend the lead to nine. Third down, seven to go. This is where Temple has been very stingy. They've given up points, but they haven't given up many touchdowns. Yeah. One of the nation's best inside the red zone. No, no backs in the backfield now. Giving it a, a pass look. Four-man rush coming. Challenge with time over the middle. It's caught by Epps. They'll give him forward progress as he took a shot, and he'll take the first down as well. Great protection up front by this offensive line. No seniors, but a lot of ability. And Epps giving up his body to go up and get that ball. Great job by that young man to haul it in. First down for the Vandals. They'll drive him down into the turf. Uh, I think the defenders had a hard time knowing exactly who had the ball. Whoever was assigned to Chad Chouch finished out that play because, again, he stayed, you know, had that running, running look to him. And the defender is allowed to go ahead and tackle the quarterback if he's carrying out a play fake as a runner. A point of much consternation in the NFL as they're feeling out what the college football scene has seen for years on that read option. Here's Chalich to throw. Had to throw across his body incomplete. I think he was trying to go for Michael Legrone, although Homie, or Homie, excuse me, 
just about came up with the ball. So it's a third down and goal from the Temple 8 yard line. A, touch, a touchdown would nearly put this one away. A field goal would add some insurance at least. And they may let this play, cock, play clock go down and just call the timeout. And if so, that will be their third and final timeout. Boy, you can tell for, for all that Idaho has done right today, you can tell that things start to bunch up a little bit when this team gets in the red zone. It's the difference between a 23-17 ball game and maybe a 35-17 ball game. Well, I mean, you just, again, one of the things that, that Idaho will look back on this game, win or lose, is finish drives with scores. Too many field goals. They, they like scoring field goals, no question about it. But they had opportunities to put touchdowns on the board. And again, like I said, Paul Petrino's a touchdown kind of guy. And, uh, and he doesn't like it when he has to settle for three. So you're not thinking, you know, just getting a few yards. Obviously, you're either going in the end zone or you're picking up. I mean, that, that's really all you're thinking, right? I, th I think so. I mean, I think you, you still want to score touchdowns here, but you, want, you don't want to put your team in a position where, you, you, you know, you, you, you put a, a risky play out there. Make sure you don't turn the ball over. Challenge to throw up in the pocket. He's taken down at the seven. Smart play there by Challenge. Didn't see his initial reads there open. Knew that if they weren't there, you're going to go ahead and try to just get up the field and get what you can, hang on to the football. And here comes Rico once again to attempt the field goal. This will be for his fourth field goal of the ball game. This will be a 25-yard attempt. It's between the hash marks. That's the other thing Chalich was able to do was keep it off the hash. Good snap, good hold. And another field goal for Austin Rico. Three more points. Makes it now a nine-point advantage, 26 to 17. Still some meat on the bone, though, here. 6 11 to go in a nine point ball game. Well, you know, an important field goal to be sure makes it a two score game. And now Temple has to get into hurry up mode. Three more points off the right foot of Austin Rico. That caps off another scoring drive. Nine plays, 49 yards. Took 3.15 off the clock, and it's 26-17 Idaho with the lead. And now five for five in the red zone. Well, and like we said right before the break, Temple's now in hurry-up mode. They've got to get down the field, score quickly, try to do it without burning timeouts because you may need to use those on defense. Rico very busy kicking the football. This one halfway through the end zone and yet another touchback. Saw time and time again in high school. We had a running bet on when we'd actually see a return when Austin Rico kicked the football in high school. And here he is picking up right where he left off. It never, I don't know that it ever happened. And if it did, they probably should have stopped the game just to uh, make sure that he was feeling OK. So here it comes now for Temple trailing by nine, 26, 17, two timeouts remaining. And there's 6 11 on the clock. Longest road trip for this team in a regular season game since 2005. It's season opener in Tempe at Sun Devil Stadium. Riley from the shotgun. The drive starting from the 25 with time over the middle. This one's getting feisty. Well, it is. Juan Martinez felt pretty good about his coverage there and had to stare down Mr. Coyer. I know you're feeling pretty good about yourself, but you still have 607 to start staring people down. Second down and 10 now. Riley now 
18 of 36, 50 percent. Rifles one near side caught. That's Fitzpatrick at the 30, met by a gaggle of tacklers. He'll gain six, and he took that one the hard way. You know, and, and a small point here, but I think a pretty uh, important one, and that is Fitzpatrick, get out of bounds. Time is now not on your side, and you're fighting for yardage. That clock continues to run. Your team could use every second that's left in this game. Get out of bounds. Let your team get back in the huddle. This team getting closer and closer to being in four-down territory. Having right. to bark out the call is going to have to watch out. There's 10 still on the clock. And they'll get the playoff. Looking, lob pass over the defense. Basket catch made on the wheel round. It's Harper, the running back. Well, a little bit of a little dose of their own medicine. Temple giving the Idaho Vandals. Nice job by Riley to be patient. Just float the ball out there for Harper. Looked like the defense of Idaho just a little bit confused. Good thing the safety came over and read it. Now here's a play down to the 10 yard line and incomplete. This team has been so close so many times on the big plays and Temple just unable to capitalize. And I'll tell you another no call by the officials here. There was a hold right as Anderson was making his break. And I think it was I think it might have been Dixon again. And boy he got away with one there and the, and the coaching staff at Temple beside themselves and he didn't get that call. Second down 10 to go. Harper in the backfield alongside Riley Riley to throw gets rid of it and boy oh boy these receivers are hearing the footsteps in that secondary well we haven't seen too many bad throws in the second half from Riley this one does get away from him though again partially because of the pressure look at it here guys collapsing around his legs as he's trying to step into a throw that's awfully tough for any quarterback. Sam, you talked about fourth down territory. We're in it right now for the Temple Owls. Quick throw, quick catch at the 40, dancing. And Fitzpatrick dives out of bounds. He does not get the first down, but he does stop the clock. But boy, he does a great job of getting up the field after this catch. It looked like he was going to be stopped right after he caught the ball, but some shifty moves and then does get out of bounds. Play of the game right here, partner. And they'll take a timeout in a very crucial situation. One timeout remaining. It's now a fourth down and two with the offense clearly going to go for it. Well, they have to go for it at this point. Uh, I mean, unless you think you could get a field goal from about, well, it would be, a, what would it be, about a 50-yarder? Uh, for a field goal uh, unit that just had no success this season. I think you need to put it in the hands of your offense and Riley. Now, taking the timeout gives you a chance, Sam, to talk about it as an offense, but the defense also able to collect themselves a little bit, really dial up what they want to do. You know, we you almost take the kicking game for granted. You know, we talk about all the red zone opportunities that netted three points instead of six and then seven with the PATs. Well, I tell you what, if you're Temple right now, you could, you know, go for the field goal now and then hope your defense can stop well, and then get the ball back. Well, but that's the big if. I mean, you've got, you've got, you've had no success really kicking field goals this year. And, and that's I what I mean. That, they, they, yeah. they don't have that consistency exactly. in the special teams position. They haven't, they've had three different kickers out there. You're forced into this situation because you don't have a field goal. The team. offense back out on the field. Fourth down, two to go. Quarterback Riley gets the first down. Everybody keyed in on the running back, and Riley took it in for the first down. Well, a great read by Riley. Again, that's just that read option. He saw, he saw the defensive end collapse. He has wide open space and knows all he needs to do is get, get that first down and keep this offense on the field. Harper, the man in the backfield. Clock still running. Four and a half to play. And the Owls are down to their last time out. Trailing by nine, 26 to 17, 10 on the play clock. 
Riley, plenty of time, throws, has a man on the sideline, caught, and he hangs on. They tried to dislodge it, but the great catch, and Alderman hangs on for dear life, I'll shaking off the cobwebs there. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that was a great throw by Riley. Fantastic concentration by the receiver, Alderman, and then Whitehead with a great tackle to knock him out of bounds. The drive continues, first and 10 from the 13. Running the football right up the gut. Inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. Four minutes to play, and the clock continues to run. And remember, Temple with only one timeout. So they're still in hurry-up mode, and probably, if they can score, the onside kick. Incomplete. Flags coming in. Sure to be pass interference. Uh, and I just about guarantee you, Sam Adams, that that was a makeup call because I didn't see a whole lot of pass interference there, but there were a couple of plays before this one that a referee absolutely missed. Anything close after that, he was throwing the flag. And now it's decision time as we take a look at the replay because the clock is stopped on the penalty from two yards out. Let's see. That looks like tight coverage to me unless the right arm got wrapped around. From the two. Fresh set of downs on first and goal. Harper in from two yards out for the touchdown. And it's back to a one-possession ball game. Huge touchdown here with 3.32 to play. Boy, you're not kidding. And what a job by Riley. So fourth down conversion, some big throws. Alderman came up with a big catch. Temple just will not go away. And now the decision for that coaching staff is, do you attempt the onside kick? You do have the one timeout. But I, I think you got to go for the onside kick. Again, just one timeout remaining for the Owls, and the Vandals are out of timeouts. Here's the PAT, and now a field goal would win it, or at least put the Owls ahead should it come down to that. Of course, still some football left to be played with three and a half to go. Boy, it, it's the ultimate decision time. You're, you're kind of in no man's land here. 332, if you're Temple, you'd like to think your defense can hold. Uh, but either way, I mean, I, I guess you got to just put it in the hands of the kicker and just, just see if you can get an onside recovery. Well, I think with two timeouts, you'd kick it away. But using that timeout on fourth down, which was probably the right decision because it kept things moving and, and put you in a position to be able to score that touchdown. I think with one timeout, I think you, you can stop it once. You just leave your offense too little time if they can get the ball back, especially the way Austin Rico has been punting the ball here today. Paul Petrino discussing things with the referees. I can't tell. You're know, looking on the sideline. They, they huddle the they huddle the uh, the kick return team on, and it looks like it's the hands team, but actually it doesn't. It looks like Idaho is setting up for a return here, thinking that Temple might kick it away. So. I guess the other question is when Temple actually uses the timeout. Well, uh, and, and and Idaho, no timeouts. So if they see Temple go into some kind of a formation that appears to be an onside kick, there's nothing Idaho can do to stop the clock. Good point. This is Jim Cooper. Freshman kicker. No onside. Return from the 11 yard line. And now near the 30 yard line. Well, there's. So, go ahead. I, I think there's there's probably a book somewhere that says down two, three and a half minutes left, you kick it away. I mean, that's probably, there's probably a coach book somewhere that tells you to do that. And clearly both coaches are reading from the same book. Uh, I would think so because. You know, again, with the one timeout, you can stop it. Again, one first down and, and the game's over, but you can stop it after one play here. 
and then you, you know, you, then you write it down. Now remember, Idaho has not been very effective running the football here in the second half, with the exception of Chad Challenge. And Challenge is the man under center, the quarterback, the pitch. They get it out to Montgomery, who's stuffed in the backfield. No gain on the carry. And Temple will save that one timeout. Perhaps the fact that it's only a two-point game right now, and Temple knows that they don't need six. They only need a field goal and don't have to go the length of the field if they get the ball back factored into that decision as well. A two-point ball game. Two teams in search of their first win on the season with 2.50 to play. Ten on the play clock. Challenge from the shotgun. He'll throw, take a shot downfield. Watson, the intended man, and the clock stops at 2.41. And that's, the, that's the, the thing you look at. I mean, Idaho does Temple a huge favor now. By stopping that clock, they don't have to use their timeout. Now you come back third and 11. Do you throw it again and perhaps suffer another incompletion? Boy, now a real, real guessing game right now, partner. Now, it's one thing if the receiver is open. You go ahead and take the shot. But maybe the point is on that one, you see that the receiver is covered. That's when you try to take off and run. That kind of a throw is a definitely a 50-50 ball. Clock stopped again with 2.41 to play in a two-point ball game. Challenge on the quarterback draw. This was drawn up from the start. He's near the first down marker. He is right at the 39-yard line. This one may need a measurement from my eyeball. He may not have gotten it. We'll have to wait and see. Well, it's right in front of us. They're going to give it to him. They're not even going to measure. What a play. And certainly nobody better than Chad Challenge to try to put a seal on this game. And why not with his legs? He's already done it to the tune of 100 plus yards on the ground. He's also thrown for 310. Temple still sitting on its final timeout. That was a crucial conversion. From the split eye formation, as we near the two minute mark, two on the play clock, they get the play off. Monk. Uh, excuse me, Jarrell Brown following his blocks. A big pickup, and here is that timeout. And now it's do or die time for the Owls. That was a big run here. They're not just trying to kill the clock, Bill, but they're trying to get yardage to make it a manageable third or second down situation. Yeah, absolutely. They're still running, you know, their, their power running game. Uh, what a big play that was to pick up that first down by Chad Challenge. And it's fitting because he's beating them with the legs all day long. Yeah. I don't think we have to put a whole lot of thought into who our player of the game is. Well, and it's amazing when you look at a stat sheet, you look for, was there a 100-yard rusher? Was there a 300-yard receiver? Was, I mean, was there a 300-yard passer? I mean, you look at these things, Challenge has two of those. He has 100-plus yards rushing. He has 310 yards passing. And then Montgomery, the running back of all people, has 102 yards receiving. Yeah. Well, that's your trifecta. And what doesn't show up, but you know if you saw this game, is just how tough of a kid Chad Challenge is because he took four or five pretty tough shots, uh, especially here in the second half, and kept getting up, kept competing, and kept performing at a high level. After the timeout, 150 to go. Challenge backs off the line to get the play in. They need four yards. The first down marker at the 49. That's not going to get it done. No gain as the clock continues to salt away. And Brown a little shaken up now. He needs to, yeah, now he's up on his feet. Jarrell Brown heading towards the sidelines. And it looks like the best Temple can do is get the ball back with about 20 seconds left if they were to stop Idaho here on third down. They'll take their sweet time, 15 seconds remaining on the play clock, 1.15 to play. And why not put it in the hands 
of Montgomery. In the I formation, third down and four. Montgomery looking for a hole. He's not going to find it. And he's brought down in the backfield for a loss of two. And the punting team, you assume, would come out on the field. Well, another one of those men that's had a big day today. Austin Rico now needs to get off, just get the punt away. That's, that's the key right now. Both teams all out of timeouts. 35 seconds to play. And no timeouts for Idaho now, so they can't kill the clock. They need to snap this. Well, if they don't, they can't take a timeout. Temple still running people onto the field. Gets the punt away. It's a clean one out to the 15. Out to the 25. That's where this drive will start with 10 seconds on the clock. Took a little time on that return by Alderman. And the crowd on its feet nearing the finish line here in Moscow. Two plays at the most for Temple. Maybe one ball down the middle of the field. Just trying to get a first down, stop the clock, then kill it. Then perhaps a uh, Hail Mary into the end zone. Riley puts one up short with three seconds, so they will have time for one final play. And Riley took a shot as he threw that football. Both of these quarterbacks have taken tremendous punishment out here today, Sam. And now Idaho backing everybody up. Only three-man rush. They have four defenders sitting at the 30-yard line. One final gasp here for the Owls. Idaho in a prevent defense, three-man rush. Riley buying some time, rolling out, trying to get those receivers downfield, puts one up in the air. Here it is. Tipped and incomplete. And Idaho, for the first time in the Paul Petrino era, emerges victorious, hanging on by a thread, 26-24 the final. Well, he doesn't always show happiness, Paul Petrino, but uh, you know deep down he's ecstatic about getting this win. Might have been a little closer than he wanted it to be, but hey, when you come in, you're 0-3, a W's a W doing. How about a big hug from the family on top of it? That's a great feeling for any dad. A huge win for the University of Idaho. Meanwhile, another heartbreaking close loss for Temple, which lost by one two weeks ago against Fordham. A two-point loss here after making the 2,500-plus mile trip cross-country here into Moscow in the heart of the Palouse. And the bells, they are ringing. Chad Chalich, huge ball game for him. The redshirt freshman out of Coeur d'Alene. 310 yards in the air and a touchdown and sacked just twice. And he beat him with the legs as well. It all came down to that big 52-yard run to put him over 100 for the ball game. Well, at the beginning of this game, we talked about the fact that Chad Chalich had put up yards, he had put up stats. What he hadn't done was put up a victory. Now you can take that away. Chad Chalich has led his team to a win. It's complete. Now, how do you move forward? You, you enjoy this? How do you move forward? A heck of a schedule coming up for these Vandals, but really something to build on, Sam. Something to hang your hat on indeed. Folks, don't go anywhere. We have more live coverage from the Kibbe Dome in Moscow, where Idaho wins for the first time this season, 26-24 to against Temple. Certainly worth the wait here on homecoming weekend. Winning by two, 26-24, and winning cures all ails. Well, something about that fight song at the end of the game, they play it regardless of win or a loss. There's something about it when you win. It just feels extra special, and you can see it. 
saluting the crowd who was really electric and I think a real difference maker here today made some noise at, at uh, important times just a great feeling and <laughs> that guy he's uh, he is so thrilled he's like oh finally we got it sometimes you feel like that first win is never going to come and it did come in just the nick of time let's take a look at the game highlights here in a wild one in Moscow and tell you what can't say enough about the play of Chad Challenge a quarterback well he was the story of the game I mean he really was every highlight that we're going to show has got you know him connected to it in one way or another that's Montgomery on the 64 yard touchdown reception early in the first quarter first points of the ball game for Temple coming on that field goal and it was 7-3 after one Challenge again reversing field throwing opposite and finding Montgomery for another big gain Montgomery 102 yards receiving for the ball game and then finishing off the drive here with this touchdown run you know Montgomery we didn't see much of him in the second half Temple really made some nice adjustments but boy he got him out to that good league and it was this running game from Temple that got him back into the football game the problem is how do you stop number 11 Chad Challenge this was a huge run I believe on third down and it went 52 yards as Chalich went over the 50 uh, 100 yard mark on that attempt and then Austin Rico one of his four field goal makes and then another touchdown here for Temple Alderman 51 yards from Connor Riley first and only touchdown pass for Riley and then they go back to the ground game and you know when they ran Bill they were successful Kenny Harper with that touchdown run one of two on the day for him and then sealing it with a tip the Hail Mary attempt falling short and Idaho hangs on to win by two well just a great overall performance again maybe a little closer than the coaches at Idaho and the players would have wanted after that big lead at halftime but you know being able to hang on and get wins like this Sam that 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 builds a ton of character on a football team and and some real belief and it's certainly better being one and three than oh and four some smiling faces here on the field here at the Kibbe Dome where the final is 26 24 for Idaho we'll wrap things up when we come back you're watching Vandal football on SWX no rest for the weary as the Temple Owls go down in a losing effort for a fourth time to start this season 26 to 24 and looming large number seven Louisville that is next Saturday so uh, no rest for those owls who are now 0 and 4 and they'll play Louisville next week now meanwhile for Idaho well things just got a whole lot better folks a big win here tonight winning by two and then they'll continue their schedule with another home date next weekend against Fresno State then it's back on the road for games at Arkansas State and Ole Miss and you look up and down here Bill one thing very clear Idaho taking on all comers well you might as well I mean you're, you're an independent this year so get out there you know get some of those games in that you know perhaps you get some some great experience maybe even a little bit of a payday and uh, continue to build on this program but now you know you can compete at a high level you just have to carry that through the next week one week at a time Homecoming weekend victory for Idaho, the first in the Paul Petrino era, 26-24, the final, riding the arm and the legs of Chad Challenge, who accounts for a career-best 424 yards of total offense. They dodge a bullet at the end and hang on to win by two, 26-24. For Bill Ames, I'm Sam Adams saying so long from the Kibbe Dome.